and welcome to an Everyday Canines video. This is the extreme layering series where we're going to look at basic layering and then taking it to the next level. You may have seen my video on my Facebook page where I demonstrated this with Sparrow. So now I'm going to show you how you can get the same results. So in this episode, we're going to look at what is layering and why you need verbal cues to achieve it. Layering, quite simply, is when you have an obstacle between you and the obstacle the dog is taking. In this case, if I was to be this side of the tunnel and I asked my dog to take that jump, this is layering because I've got a layer of obstacles between me and the obstacle my dog is going to take. Extreme layering is also a version of distance handling, if you like. It's when I put another obstacle between me and the obstacle the dog is going to take. So in this case, if I go behind the next jump, send my dog to that jump, at that stage, it is becoming extreme layering. It's layering that most people will never do. But once you can do that, it opens up a world of opportunities for you. And if nothing else, it's a good exercise to um, develop your layering skills and give your dog confidence. So when we're doing layering, we need verbal cues because our dogs can't rely on our body language. When we're a purely body language handler, body motion handler, we have to go to the obstacle we want the dog to take. But in layering, we need to be able to tell the dog that though my body is over here, you need to go take something else. For that, we need good, strong verbal cues. I will use four verbal cues in this little sequence. They are go, jump, tunnel, obviously, and out. I'll talk about out because that's a very specific layering and distance handling cue in a later episode. But in this initial episode, I want to talk to you about go, jump, and tunnel, and how you want to teach these foundational skills to prepare your dog for the next stages. So why do I have two cues for a jump? So go and jump, if you were to hear me doing them on a course, you'd say, well, they're the same cue. They both tell the dog to go out and take a jump. And yes, you are right, but actually, there is a reason to have that extra jump cue for me. So if I tell my dog, go, see this, if they go along a line of jumps, if I said to my dog, go, 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 that means drive that line as fast as you can in a straight uh, path. Go for me also means go on the flat, on between obstacles. So this is probably not such a thing you find if you have big dogs. When I've got little dogs and you've got a 10 meter distance between obstacles, I found that sometimes they start to question, am I still driving on? They need a lot of drive to push on. And certainly with little Swift, she would get so far out, she'd be in the middle of no man's land and she'd go, well, do you want me to just keep going straight on? So go then became a bit of a flat work cue as well. So for instance, if I was to send my dog into this tunnel and I wanted him to power out, even say there was weave poles after the tunnel, not necessarily a jump, I would say tunnel, go, and then say weave poles, so poles or dog walk. So go for them also means drive across um, the flat. That is not necessarily a bad thing. It's not an issue in most courses. The issue comes when you're doing something like this where you need to very specifically tell your dog to take a jump and not whatever's in front of them. So what I found was when I get to this stage where I'm doing my layering, I tell my dog go. And then if I was to say go again, sometimes my dogs get it wrong and pick up the tunnel instead because they're driving the go cue to them is a drive on the flat work and I might actually say to them go tunnel so it becomes a little bit of a gray area for them I then found if I added in an extra cue jump which purely means take a jump the success rate went up hugely because of the clarity so my dogs went from being a bit vague, not quite sure, perhaps hesitating because they weren't sure what I wanted, to going, yep, I know what she means. She doesn't want me to take that tunnel because she would not be saying jump for that tunnel. She's going to mean that jump cue, that jump pole. So while I don't use jump very often, when it comes to discrimination between obstacles that are close together, I would use it. It is just that extra, I say, it's that extra layer of, of um, clarity for the dog and understanding. Jump will never mean 
a flat work cue. It's not, it doesn't mean drive on. Jump does not mean it. It means just take this jump straight. So I would never say, um, if there was a dog walk after the tunnel, I would never say tunnel, jump, dog walk, unless there was a jump in between, of course. So that just takes that level of um, specificity to, for the dog. It gives them that extra understanding. You don't have to have that extra cue. Certainly you don't. I found it really helps me with all my distance handling and discrimination, but of course that is an option that you might not want to have. It is very straightforward to teach it, but we'll come to that in a minute. Now, my third cue is obviously tunnel. Straightforward enough and fairly obvious. Of course, some people don't have tunnel, they have through. But my tunnel cue is what it is. It means take the nearest entrance of the tunnel that you can see and drive through it in a straight line. Um, unless I cued them something else coming out of it, they should drive straight on to whatever's um, at the end. Um, possibly I would add a go cue just to make sure they powered on. So those are your three basic cues you're going to need to start using. If you've got none of these cues, if perhaps you just rely on a go and a, an arm to point where you want the dog to go, then you're going to need to start building these up. I'm assuming that if you're looking at this series, you're probably already interested in doing these things and probably have got cues. But there's no harm looking at these things a bit more. So when I'm teaching a verbal, um, I start with whatever I'm going to be begin with. So I usually would start with the jump. Um, it doesn't. Ha it can obviously be at home. It doesn't have to be at the field. I wouldn't have it right next to a tunnel at this stage. I would have it out. Really? I would have it out on its own. So there was nowhere else for the dog to go but to go over that jump. And I'd have a toy. So I'll grab a toy. I've got my jump set very low. You could even have it on a puppy jump, a puppy, puppy bump. It doesn't need to be high because we're just teaching a skill. So I'd set my dogs up, sit. I'd throw the toy out, wait. It's back, come here. Good girl. And then I'd ask my dog to go get it. Ready, sit, go get it. Now, okay, I did say go, but what I was really doing was just telling her to drive out to that toy. Good girl, Sparrow. As my dog gets to the point where they're looking at a toy and wanting to drive out, I would then um, start adding in my verbal cue, which is go and jump. I start adding in both those cues fairly early on and mix them up so the dog understands they're both the same. As I go along, quite naturally, the go cue becomes more hazy because I use it in different places around the course. Um, but it's only at this early stage, that's fine. If you've already got a go cue, you might not need that, but you might just need to teach the jump. So the jump is the one you've got to concentrate on, make sure it's specific um, and that you don't muddle it up by using it in the wrong place. So for instance, jump never means do a wing wrap. It's always a straight over. I wouldn't say jump and then turn, none of that. Jump means take the jump and straight over. So that's, that's the games I'm gonna start playing with these to build up that understanding of the word and eventually I want to be able to remove the toy and I'm going to set my dogs up. Okay, can you sit? Spa, can you come here? Let's swifty this bit. Come here. She says, oh, okay. All right, ready? Jump! Oh, oh, see, see, you weren't ready, were you? Ready? Jump! Good girl, Sparrow. Good girl. So my dog will go out and take the obstacle without me moving. Sparrow! You can see I actually probably need to do a bit more work with me being static on that cue. Same applies to the tunnel. Ready, 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 ready! Come here, come here. Ready, ready, ready. Tunnel, tunnel, tunnel! Good girl, Swift. So, again, the dogs hear the cue, they know what to pick up. Most dogs are tunnel crazy and they love to run out and find that tunnel. So that usually isn't too hard to teach. So that's gonna be your first step of the journey to getting your layering. You're gonna work on these cues. Once we've got the cues, we can then start adding, asking our dog to discriminate, which we'll be looking at in the next episode. 
If you've enjoyed this episode of Everyday Canines, then maybe you'd like to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And you can also check us out on Facebook and Instagram. And I hope to see you all again very, very soon.